this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. 636 million XRP moved by Ripple and Whales. That's the topic discussed in this article that's on your screen from Crypto Media Outlet U today. And I'm not even going to read this article because it's too samey compared to articles of this type that we just, we just keep seeing. And this is, by the way, not even to rip on you today. I actually like the outlet. They, they, they cover all sorts of stuff that, frankly, a lot of other crypto media outlets don't cover. But the reason I'm not going to cover is because like, although these numbers are staggering and it's fantastic and all the data in the world shows how much XRP has been accumulated recently by XRP whales, and that's all fantastic, it's it's like the same thing over and over and over again. So, yes, happy to point it out because this persists, but it really kind of gets to a more, like a more broad idea that the numbers in the world of crypto surrounding any cryptocurrency and certainly true of XRP, it just becomes staggering at times. And the opportunity out there, it's it's hard for people to wrap their heads around. It's, in fact, take a look at this headline from the Daily Hodl. Here's a $16 trillion, that's trillion with a D, a blockchain opportunity for 2030, according to consulting giant BCG. And I wanted to run through this article because, you know, although they're not explicitly talking about XRP, what they are talking about does explicitly apply to XRP. We're talking about the idea of tokenizing pretty much every damn thing on the, on the planet, that it would make sense to tokenize. That's a lot of things. Like even things such as stocks, you know, property, there's all sorts of stuff. And XRP, one of the most adopted cryptos on the entire planet, the first, uh, the world's first ever decentralized exchange is built right into the XRP ledger, perfectly positioned for all this. And all of that would require the usage of XRP specifically. That's the way that it's all programmed, which would just further, you know, ins ins ensure the long-term viability of XRP. So well, there's no way to know here in 2022 exactly how it's going to unfold, to what degree XRP, the XRP ledger will get some or any of, of you know, this, this pie that's sitting out here. But the potential's there. And so I wanted to run through and express to you, you know, how big of a deal that is and perhaps like what, what are the odds of this actually even happening anyway? Because they throw some really big numbers out here. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Now, first, I did want to note that Glassnode, uh, which is a, a firm that does all sorts of really fascinating and excellent Bitcoin on-chain analytics work, and not just Bitcoin, just very frequently Bitcoin. Um, they shared what's on your screen right here, and to me, this just continues to uh, get at this idea that, my gosh, whatever is happening in this crypto market right now, we've seen the worst of it. Or, if, and, and, you know, even if we're not technically at the very bottom, if we haven't seen that yet, then we're so damn close, it probably doesn't matter. So they shared this chart titled, Bitcoin Total Supply Held by Long-Term Holders, and their tweet reads as follows. Hashtag Bitcoin. Total supply held by long-term holders has reached a new all-time high of 13.62 million Bitcoin. Long-term holder supply is the volume of Bitcoin which has been dormant for 155 days and is statistically the least likely to be spent during market volatility. So I'll just pause and note when they say spent, just moving to a new wallet. So typically when that happens, it's because it's being sold, right? It could be panic selling, whatever. But if you're, you're talking about people that are holding it, over half the supply of Bitcoin, this is the most that's ever been held for that long in the history of Bitcoin. Like, this is not how people behave, you, you know, um, in, uh, in, in uh, you know, if, if they're about to panic sell. Like you, you would have done it by, that's what I'm saying. Like the, they did it already. The people that were going to panic sell they are out already, by and large. So you've got some people, that's a suspicion here anyway, that's the point, that's a broader point that's always made when they share this chart. It's, uh, it, it's that you're dealing with people that have conviction here. And this is important whether you're into XRP or pick your crypto because Bitcoin leads the market. This is highly consequential. So you got that, and then like I was citing, you know, another article here from you today, 636 million XRP moved by Ripple and Wales. Well, XRP is getting accumulated as well. The market moves in tandem. There's so much opportunity. That's why I keep saying, like, there's a reason I'm excited about this stuff every single day. I think it's going to be worth an absolute fortune. And if you were here, I'm willing to bet that you may believe something similar. There's no way to know, and maybe we're wrong, and it goes to zero. I always put that disclaimer out there because I try to be a realist. But still, my God, the opportunity, right? 
Speaking of opportunity to this article from the Daily Huddle, here's a $16 trillion blockchain opportunity for 2030, according to consulting giant BCG. Uh, Boston Consulting Group, or again BCG for short, be believes that blockchain technology presents a massive business opportunity by 2030. The global consulting giant says in a new report that on-chain asset tokenization can help address the, the challenge posed by asset illiquidity. According to Boston Consulting Group, the value of tokenized assets worldwide will exceed $15 trillion by the next eight years, an amount estimated to be equivalent to 10% of the global gross domestic product then. And I'll just pause to note, setting aside where uh, you know, where items are actually tokenized, whether it's on the XRP ledger or not, be great. I'd love to see all sorts of stuff on the XRP ledger get tokenized. Even if not, though, you still need to bridge this stuff. And so there, that's a separate opportunity, which I'm not as much going to focus on in this video, but that's what you know, like utilizing XRP as a bridge currency, because you're not going to have every possible asset that exists, a, a tokenized representation on every exchange on the entire planet with every possible pair and with deep liquidity. Of course, that's never going to happen. So you need something to bridge this all together, and XRP is the cryptocurrency that's best suited for this. So th that represents tremendous opportunity, but even aside from that, uh, it has a built-in decentralized exchange. So anyway, here's a quote from BCG. The total size of illiquid asset tokenization globally would be $16 trillion by 2030, end quote. The value of tokenized assets is currently at $310 billion. So in 2022, 310 billion, they're talking about eight years from now being up to 16 trillion. Now this might sound unreasonable or wacky on the surface, but think about it a little bit deeper. Look, I'm not making a prediction. I don't know what's gonna happen, but it doesn't actually sound that bonkers because it's not like we're talking about the creation of new assets worth $16 trillion. We're talking about the way in which they're represented, which is moving from the, the world of legacy finance to being tokenized. So having big jumps up as this technology is adopted, that seems pretty reasonable, if not probable. In fact, I think it's reasonable to suppose it's highly probable because it's just a better way of tracking things. You know, and it, it, you know, if, you've just, if you just, all you have to do is trust code, you can just look at a blockchain and say, okay, there it is. Well, there's value to that. There, there, there simply is, and you don't need a middleman, right? Anyway, peace continues. The global consulting giant says that one of the characteristics of illiquid assets which include land, fine art, commodities, and private equity, is they are typically undervalued. And here's another quote. All else being equal, illiquid assets typically trade at a discount versus liquid assets and are characterized by a high stock-to-flow ratio, lower trading volumes, and imperfect price discovery versus liquid assets, end quote. So why might that be? Why is it the case that uh, assets that are more illiquid than others Perhaps, perhaps trade at a discount or trading for less than they otherwise would. Be well, the answer is there's fewer people in specific mar markets then. It's greater friction, but if you can open everything up on a global level and it's just tokenized and you can more visibly see everything that's available around the planet, you increase the velocity of these transactions. You, you increase the demand effectively. That's what we're talking about here. So if that happens, things that, you know, in, in legacy finance perhaps would be worth less would suddenly be worth more. Yeah, because there'd be, no, be more demand for it, right? And it's easier to move around. So that's one of the reasons there would be more demand for it. Peace continues. According to Boston Consulting Group, asset tokenization assists in unlocking the value of illiquid assets. And here's a final quote. On-chain asset, asset tokenization presents an opportunity to obviate many of these barriers of asset illiquidity, as well as the current modality of traditional fractionalization. See, that's kind of was getting at there. Fractionalization. And then you say, uh, on-chain asset tokenization helps reimagine the end-to-end -end process of finding and matching investors with investment opportunities and the subsequent secondary market opportunities once an investment has been made, end quote. Exactly. So because this technology exists, as it increasingly is adopted, it's going to create more and more opportunities specifically for XRP and perhaps even the XRP ledger itself, depending on where things get tokenized. But even if just as a bridge, you've already got something there. There's just going to be more and more of a need. So we're sitting in a world where there's $310 billion worth of tokenized assets. Well, if you're talking about $16 trillion, and that'll be more a more mature asset class, certainly, you know, 2030 compared to now, well, what do you think might happen? Something's got to bridge all this. 
And XRP is one of the most, like I keep saying, one of the most adopted cryptos on the entire planet. And since there is no central authority, there aren't going to be jurisdictional issues in terms of where it can be listed outside of nonsense uh, lawsuits, like, for instance, the SEC v. Ripple case. Other than that, though, no. It, there's no central authority, so you don't have to worry about that extra layer of trust. That's the point. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.